So Dr. Jill Stein has officially chosen her vice presidential running mate, and that individual is longtime human rights activist and political science scholar Ajamu Baraka. And on her website, she describes Baraka as a powerful, eloquent spokesperson for the transformative radical agenda whose time has come, an agenda of economic, social, racial, gender, climate, indigenous, and immigrant justice. Now, Jill Stein's website also states that Ajamu Baraka is an internationally recognized human rights activist, organizer, and geopolitical analyst founding executive director of the U.S. Human Rights Network until 2011 and coordinator of the U.S.-based Black Left Unity Network's Committee on International Affairs. Baraka has served on the boards of various national and international human rights organizations, including Amnesty International USA and the National Center for Human Rights Education. Now, she also considered several unnamed activists that she didn't talk about. Um, another choice would have been Chris Hedges, and she also talked about potentially choosing uh, Bernie Sanders surrogate Nina Turner. Now, even though Nina Turner would have been the ideal scenario for her running mate, I'm actually glad that she she declined uh, because one, I agree with Benjamin Dixon that she needs to take a break after campaigning for Bernie all this time. But also, uh, Nina Turner is someone who I think has the potential to maybe one day make a gubernatorial run and then eventually a presidential run. And if Nina Turner actually takes this position as her running mate, well, if she tries to run as a Democrat one day, what are they going to do? They're going to smear her and call her a traitor. They're going to say how she tried to run as a Green Party candidate. And they did this to Bernie Sanders, even though he was an independent. So clearly they're going to have a problem with this. And if we really want Nina Turner to become president one day, I think this is probably the best case scenario, even though admittedly, I would lose my shit if uh, Jill Stein did select Nina Turner as her VP running mate because that would be the best ticket I could imagine besides uh, just Jill Stein and Bernie Sanders together. Uh, so in the end, I, I think that we can use Nina Turner for something else later in the future in terms of, you know, building this progressive political revolution. Now, when it comes to the policy positions of Ajamu Baraka, if you're a progressive, if you're a Jill Stein supporter, chances are you're going to agree with 99% of what he has to say. Now, he's a huge advocate for abolishing the death penalty, and he's also, again, a human rights activist, a long-time human rights activist, and if you didn't notice, this podcast is called The Humanist Report. So a humanist and a human rights activist, I think that, you know, they're going to get along just fine. So if you're also a humanist and you, if you have inclinations towards that, uh, then I think that Ajamu Baraka will be a great, exciting choice for her VP pick. Now, if I were Dr. Jill Stein, what would I do in terms of choosing a VP running mate? What criteria would I look for? Well, as is the case with any vice presidential running mate, you always want to pick someone who is strong where you're weak. Now, with that in mind, there are two common criticisms of Jill Stein that I always hear on Reddit, on, uh, you know, YouTube, just in general. And I think that she could have potentially picked someone who would quell all of those criticisms. So one of the criticisms clearly is that she's never held public office before. Now this criticism I disagree with because I think it's unfair. I don't care about that. I care that she has policies that I agree with. Now would it be a great bonus if she did actually have experience in public office? Yeah, but that's not gonna be make or break for me. I mean, nobody really questions whether or not Donald Trump is qualified to run even though he was born into wealth, but because he's a quote, successful businessman, well, I guess that makes him qualified to run. No, it doesn't make him qualified to run any more than it makes Jill Stein qualified to run. Jill Stein actually has policy positions that will help the middle class, but yet people just like to attack the Green Party because that's what's cool to do right now. You're supposed to fall in line. Now, with that being said, many people actually disagree with me here because her lack of experience is a deal breaker for many people, hence why 10% of Bernie supporters are actually supporting Gary Johnson and 11% are supporting Jill Stein. Now, of that 21% of Bernie supporters that will be voting third party, all of them should be supporting Jill Stein over Gary Johnson because her policies are very close to Bernie's while Gary Johnson is the polar opposite in many ways. I mean, he might be a non-interventionist and an anti-war candidate, but he's in favor of the TPP and he wants to privatize Social Security. He also doesn't support a single-payer healthcare system. But I mean, based on many of the comments I've seen on Reddit and Facebook and uh, from anti-Hillary Bernie supporters, they're just reluctant to support Stein specifically because she's never held public office. 
so they don't think she's qualified to start with the highest office. So just know that that is a common criticism. I disagree with it, but we do have to take that into account. Now, another obvious weakness that Dr. Jill Stein has clearly is lack of name recognition. I mean, this is due to a number of reasons. Um, she is politically unknown. The Green Party doesn't get very much press coverage, and also um, she's not allowed to debate. So it's basically not going to be the case that she will be able to qualify for the debates unless she could poll at 15% in five different polls. And honestly, time is running out. So name recognition is huge right now. It's it's really difficult to win a campaign if nobody knows who you are. Harambe the Dead Gorilla polls higher than Jill Stein with 5% while Jill only receives 2% of the vote. Now, this isn't necessarily because voters want to communicate that Jill Stein is so unfavorable that they'd rather vote for a dead gorilla than her, but what it probably means is that they don't really know who she is, although they do know that they dislike Clinton or Trump, so they're just choosing a gorilla to, one, kind of communicate that they hate the system and they want to burn it down and because they don't know that there is a progressive option available in this election. So with those two common criticisms in mind, here's what I would do if I was Jill Stein. I would pick someone that would either A, boost my visibility and uh, get me some more name recognition, someone really popular uh, like Nina Turner would have been fantastic, maybe Cornell West, um, or two, I would um, try to speak to the other criticism and pick someone who's held public office before. That's what I would have done. So with that in mind, do I personally like Ajamu Baraka? Absolutely. Would I want to have a beer with him and discuss political science stuff with him? Absolutely. And if you read some of his pieces that are on his website, even though he writes a lot of stuff that may be seen as controversial, I mean, what he has to say is incredibly interesting and it gets you really thinking. It's stimulative. So I do like Ajamu Baraka, just generally speaking. But when it comes to the question of whether or not I would have chosen him as my VP running mate if I were Jill Stein, honestly, probably not when you take into account those two criticisms that I stated. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't going to dissuade me from voting for Jill Stein. I still am very enthusiastically going to cast my vote for Jill Stein come November. But just looking at this from a strategic angle, when you're picking a VP, you want someone that will give people more reasons to vote for you. Now, there's one more reason why I think this pick was probably not a good idea strategically. So think about why Jill Stein's support has exploded over the course of the last few months. Well, she's picking up a ton of support from Bernie Sanders supporters who won't be voting for Hillary Clinton. Now, with that in mind, you want to choose someone that will boost your credibility among Sanders supporters. Now, Baraka has criticized Bernie Sanders in ways that I think are completely unfair. So, uh, to give you some examples, he said that Bernie Sanders isn't so much interested in political reform as he is committed to Eurocentrism and normalized white supremacy. Now, he also criticized Dr. Cornell West for even supporting Bernie Sanders, saying that his endorsement of Bernie was tantamount to him, quote, sheepdogging for the Democrats by drawing voters into the corrupt Democratic Party. Now, look, I'm the first person to argue that the Democratic Party is completely corrupt, but I also contend that you can try to reform it from within. And that's what Bernie Sanders tried to do. Now, that proved to be, you know, a failure. Uh, but we can still try in the future and we can still try to reform it externally. So, I mean, even though I like Jill Stein, I have to be objective and truthful. And honestly, Baraka wouldn't have been my first choice. Other options, I mean, could have been Lawrence Lessig or even uh, Sherry Honkala, who is her 2012 running mate, who was also an activist, but didn't say these things about Bernie Sanders. Now, even with all that being said, I don't want you to get too discouraged about supporting this ticket if you are a Jill Stein supporter, because uh, they actually will be having a town hall on CNN where both Baraka and Jill will be there on the 17th of August, and you can hear him out. Hear him out. I guarantee that you're going to agree more with him than you disagree with him, even in spite of these comments. But I mean, you could put that aside, and hopefully someone in the audience will ask him about these comments to clarify what he meant by this, because clearly he's very critical of Bernie Sanders and Cornell West. But part of it is he is a self-proclaimed radical, and I think that that's fine. But I mean, for someone who you are trying to cultivate legitimacy among, which is Bernie Sanders supporters, this could potentially be damaging to the ticket. So don't get discouraged, hear him out, and know that politically, when he speaks, he sounds like Bernie Sanders. So I will leave you with a speech from Ajamu Baraka at the Green Party convention. And when you hear him speak, I think that you will like what he has to say because we need these types of voices in the progressive community to talk about these issues. The American people are longing for a change. They are ready to do something different. 
And we have to be the vehicle for that difference. You know, there are difficult conditions that the people face. You know, they tell us that there has been a, a recovery and things are all right from the crisis. But you know what? There are millions of people, people who we work with, who haven't experienced any kind of recovery. There are millions of people who still don't have a place to lay their head at night. There's a reason why the fastest growing population of homeless people are black women with children. There are millions of people who would like to have a job where they can live a decent life, but they don't have it. And if they have a job, that basically they are making starvation wages. They're working two and three different jobs just to make ends meet. But they tell us things are better. We have a situation where, as a consequence of austerity across this country, in communities where we live and work, they're closing down schools. People live in communities where they can't go to the store because there's no store. So you have like 48 million people who are living in situations where they are going to bed every night hungry. We have a situation where basically even with so-called Obamacare, we have millions still without health care. These are difficult conditions, difficult conditions. And people are wondering why. Why do we have to, why do we have to accept this kind of situation? And so when the two parties attempt to try to herd people based on fear, we find that today there are millions of people who are prepared to do something different who are prepared to go another way. And we are gonna be there to provide that opportunity for a new day and another way.